Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild, aka Mono Bluetron here, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So, if you don't like playing against that Dark Magician deck that got more popular since they revealed more support for the deck, do not go on YGO Pro for at least another couple of weeks. I would say it's at least 90% that deck. The footage for today took hours to gather because every single game was just against another Dark Magician player, and you can really only kick that deck's teeth in. So many times before you just pray everyone realizes that it's not particularly good. Um, I had one guy call me a gay cuck for daring to play anything other than Dark Magicians. And, you know, just from a logistical perspective, that doesn't really make sense. Like, cucking is a pretty straight thing, right? There was also an N-word thrown around in there, which just adds more confusion to it. Let's jump into deck edit and see what got him so mad. So this is a deck focused around a, an archetype that I don't think is really getting the attention it deserves. That's the retrained Magnet Warriors. Now, there's certainly a lot of buzz about the new retrained XYZ Dragon Cannon Monsters. That's the ABC archetype that's currently tearing up OCG. But really not a lot of talk about the other archetype, which is Yugi's Magnets. Um, that's because, of course, the deck is not as good. It's also pretty normal summon reliant. And while the plays are kind of fantastic, they require you to have cards in the hand instead of the extra deck. But by utilizing a bunch of cards that are pretty much free eight-star summons for rock decks alongside uh, Brilliant Fusion, I think we can take this deck from sort of a normal summon reliance, slow, grindy, methodical sort of deck to a pretty fast rank three and rank eight spam engine. So let me walk you through the card choices, and then I'll sort of explain the ideas behind the deck. We got three Berserky on the Electromagnetic Warrior. This card is incredible. It's ABC Dragon Cannon, but you don't get it from the extra deck. You got to banish them from your hand field and graveyard in order to special summon it from your hand. When he dies, you can get the three banished cards back, and you can banish one card from your graveyard during your turn, one Magna Warrior to destroy a card your opponent controls. Then we have the Magnet Warriors themselves. We got Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. Alpha adds a Berserky onto your hand when he's normal or special. Beta adds an Electromagnetic Warrior when he's normal or special. And Gamma is, you know, Tin Goldfish, uh, Goblinberg, Gold Gadget, whatever you want to call the effect, but specifically for Electromagnets. Um, then we got our eight star monsters. We got Guy who played the Earth Giant, super easy to summon in this deck. Also, actually, pretty good. Uh, he can basically only be destroyed by card effects because his effect is if a monster attacks him, then its attack is halved, and he already has 2800. Block Dragon says your rock monsters can basically only be destroyed by battle because uh, they can't be destroyed by card effects. This card has a steeper summoning requirement, so we're only playing two, but I don't need to tell you how powerful it is when you get it out. Two Gem Knight Obsidian, because I don't trust myself to <laughs> draw well and not end up with one of these in my hand. Two copies of Giant Century of Stone. This card's really good. You send it off Brilliant Fusion, and then you can immediately special summon it to make going into rank threes a lot easier. Chronomaly Crystal Bones. This card is a Cyber Dragon, but it's a three-star rock monster. It is also light, so you can make Gem Knight Seraphonite. Then we got our Hand Traps, two Maxi, two Effect Veiler. As far as spells, we've got three trade-in because these eight stars really clog up your hand at times. Because you can search Berserky on, uh, I have never found this to be dead. Three copies of Ties of the Brethren, which is something I'm trying out. Basically, this card summons the other magnets if you have one magnet on your side of the field. Let's say you summon Gamma, then you get the special Beta and Alpha, and then you get to use their effects. So you add a Berserky on and an Electromagnetic to your hand. It's kind of nuts. Um, we got three copies of Twin Twister because these eight stars and hand traps really clog up your hand a lot of the time. Uh, we got three copies of Brilliant Fusion, Self-Explanatory, and a Solemn for fun. In the extra, we've got two Gemini Zirconia. This is the one you want to usually go into. It's eight stars. You can go into your rank eight plays a lot easier. We got Seraphonite because it's a good card. Uh, our rank eights are Hope, Blaster, Buster, Blader, Dragon, Titanic, Man, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, then we got Galaxy Eyes Cypher, Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon, and Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. And as far as threes go, we got Phantom Knights of Breaksword, uh, Grand Pulse, Dante, Levier, and then these cards. Um, one Soul of Silver Mountain, which says your opponent can't activate a spell or trap when it's summoned. Like, you pick one and then they can't activate it, and then when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you get to Monster Reborn, a Earth Monster. Then we got Gorgonic Guardian. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can make a face-up monster your opponent controls attack zero, and during your turn, you can destroy a monster with zero attack. 
then we got a utopia. So let's jump into the games and see what happens. So I did my best to prevent you from having to see too much Dark Magician today, but unfortunately that means you're going to have to look at some games against decks like this one, which I think is some kind of water stun. We've opened pretty well. We've got a Brilliant Fusion, a Chronomaly Crystal Bones, and a 8-star monster, so let's see what we can make happen. We're going to start with Brilliant Fusion, immediately get back our Giant Sentry, which we can overlay with the Chronomaly Crystal Bones into a Dante. We then send a bunch of cards. Um, we get pretty lucky and mill a second Giant Sentry, which makes uh, summoning the Gaia Plate a lot less painful. We get galaxy he sets three cards in the normal or and then uses sea lord's amulet i'm like this is a weird ass card and it's obviously bait but i actually think there's a world in which i can't deal with cards that are unable to be destroyed by card effects so i figure i will go ahead and take it and then he summons saber shark and i'm like i don't really know what's going on here We've drawn enough monsters to use Block Dragon to special summon itself. We actually can send Maxi to special summon Block Dragon, but we get him out, and he bottomlesses. Unfortunately, Block Dragon prevents your monsters from being destroyed, and Bottomless actually says destroy that monster and then banish it. So uh, we're going to use Dante's effect, and he decides, I don't want to sit through this. So that's what it looks like to touch someone's butt. This is what it looks like to get your butt touched. We have three copies of Beta, the Electromagnetic Warrior, in the hand. I included this clip because it's the worst brick we saw all day. Our opponent is playing, surprise, surprise, Magicians. Um, we kind of almost are in it. I get to Twin Twister away, this uh, Dark Magic Circle, and he summons Apprentice Illusion, and I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Sets three, and I'm like, well, if he doesn't have a Dark Magician in hand, maybe we're in it. We're going to use uh, Gamma's effect in order to summon... Uh, Beta, then we're going to be able to overlay in a Dante and kill this Apprentice Illusion Magician. He doesn't use anything, so I'm like, ah, maybe we're okay. And now we're actually in business. If we get to normal summon this Gamma next turn, that means we get to special summon our Alpha, get a Berserky on, and immediately summon it. And then we have a bunch of cards in the graveyard that we can use to destroy our opponent's cards. So I'm feeling all right about it. He uses another Dark Magic Circle, draws an Eternal Soul, uh, <laughs> top decks an Apprentice Illusion Magician, gets that out, adds Dark Magician to his hand, Uses Magician's Navigation. I'm like, all right, let's see if he takes the Maxi Challenge. And he does. He goes ahead and summons a billion cards. And then he gets to banish a card. And I'm like, okay, well, based on the cards on his field right now, I'm actually not dead. So if he just lets me untap, I might be able to win. But, of course, he flips Eternal Soul uh, and pumps his Dark Magician to 3,500 just to rub it in. So now that I've shown you sort of what a good hand looks like and what a bad hand looks like, this is a game that I guess is a little closer. Truthfully, I'm just grasping at straws to show you things that aren't Dark Magic Circle banishing cards. Uh, we're playing against Abyss Actors, and we've opened okay, provided he doesn't kill us the turn we use Ties of the Brethren. Um, we get to go second here, so he's going to set one card and pass. Uh, that's interesting. We'll use Ties of the Brethren, uh, summon a whole bunch of cards, and uh, then uh, get their effects off to add even more. Our opponent now decides that it is time to set a whole bunch and pass, and I'm like, okay, well, we can trade in, and then we draw a Twin Twister, and I'm like, oh, we probably just win here. Let's uh, overlay our way into victory. We're going to make a Dante. We don't have the ability to make three Dantes, but we can make a Levier, special summon this Gaia plate, and then get one of the cards we banished back with Levier, and then overlay into another guy. So this is 8,000. We're going to attack. He uses Battle Fader, and I'm like, I guess I'll max. Jeez, I hate Battle Fader. We'll go into Gorgonic Guardian, and because Battle Fader has zero attack, we actually do not have to detach an Xyz to destroy him. Our opponent uh, draws and thinks, uh, you know, I can't beat this board, and allows me to win the game. So we're back with the deck. It performed basically exactly as I expected. It was not nearly as swarmy or potent as ABC, but it did do some things. When it was good, it was really good, and when it was bad, it was really, really bad. I showed you the absolute worst brick, but I promise there were some others. Truthfully, I think there's a couple of problems with this list. The first is the Ties of the Brethren is nowhere near as good as it needs to be. Um, it's not very good to summon a whole bunch of monsters, plus a whole bunch if you just die on your next turn. Because of that, I think I would probably play some more stun traps. I would probably take out the hand traps and replace them with, like, Quaking Mirror Force and an Upstart Goblin. Um, besides that, the rest of the deck performed pretty well. There was never a time when I felt Block Dragon was a little cloggy, and Trade-In really helped smooth out a whole lot of really bad hands. Um, 
Uh, if anything, I wish I could just play more rank eights. And I think there are ways you can cut cards from the extra deck based on your meta or what you're seeing. You probably don't need two Gorgonic Guardian um, in order to uh, play rank eights that are more tailored to uh, what you see. But aside from that, I did really enjoy the deck. Uh, like I said, when it was good, it was really good. And I certainly would appreciate testing it a little more in the future. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed a thorough, in-depth explanation of why Yugi will never again beat Kaiba in a battle of the retrained monsters. I hope you enjoyed my attempts to force Gaia Plate the Earth Golem into some deck so I can get value out of the 45 ultis I have. And most of all, I hope you just enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, a comment, or a subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want to see me play the decks we build on this show on stream, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time. Finally, if you want to see a certain deck or archetype played in the next episode of this show, let me know in the comments below, and I will see what I can do. Otherwise, I will see you on Monday.